It is a well-known fact that Americans prefer their goods in jumbo sizes. And in this nation, gigantic objects and buildings are the norm. Americans can certainly brag about their accomplishments in large-scale infrastructure projects. It doesn't matter if it's the internationally renowned Golden Gate Mega Bridge in San Francisco, California, or the less well-known but no less impressive enormous State Route 99 tunnel in Seattle, Washington. America has a lot of engineering and infrastructure building experience. China hasn't been sleeping, though, and with the advancements in infrastructure technology, it can compete with nations like the United States and Japan in the creation of large-scale projects. Because of its extensive and well-developed infrastructure, China is widely regarded as a rising global force. You just can't help but be awestruck whenever China takes over an infrastructure project. Currently, China is devoting trillions of dollars to the construction of vast infrastructure projects across Asia and the globe. Join us in this video for 10 new Chinese mega-projects that shocked American scientists. Number 10. The Kishui River Bridge The first mega-project on our list is the Kishui River Bridge, which stands a staggering 350 meters far above the river. The necessity for a reliable connection between the Gizhu Zhongzaigu and Sichuan Zugu expressways became obvious when the Chinese government intended to boost economic development in the provinces of Sichuan and Gizhu. The bridge, which would cost approximately $250 million, would span the whole breadth of the Kishui River, a bit more than two kilometers in length altogether. The tall bridge's design, production, and construction were all covered by a 360-degree contract awarded to Sichuan Road and Bridge. But even if they had tried, they couldn't have picked a worse location. The site's winding steep terrain presented a challenging topography issue. The team's inventiveness was put to the test by the geological conditions on the Sichuan side, which included a cliff and a demand for a maximum elevation of 350 meters. Even operating in the huge, rocky, and collapsed zones posed a major risk to the engineers. Sichuan chose a design that called for using a double tower and single-span suspension for around 1,200 meters of the bridge. But as the design grew increasingly intricate, the business acknowledged that it was the most difficult task they had undertaken in years. Because of the topography, it was challenging to construct an access road to the site, making the use of heavy equipment particularly challenging. The team had to decide how to create a system of 158 cables to support the bridge deck and how to build the main bridge deck as a truss off site and bring segments to the canyon. However, Sichuan was able to save days of design work and 19 months of construction because of advanced Chinese technology. In late 2019, the Kishui River Bridge opened. Additionally, the business cut more than $2 million from the budget. This was made possible by their efforts to decrease the earthwork required and the bridge tower foundation by 30%. Number 9. The Shanghai Urban Railway Expansion As one of the busiest and most populous cities in the world, Shanghai has long been a hub for transportation and commerce. The city's railway system plays a vital role in connecting it to the rest of China and beyond. In recent years, the Shanghai Railway Network has undergone a significant expansion, with the construction of new lines, stations, and high-speed trains. This expansion has not only improved the efficiency and capacity of the railway system, but also helped to support the city's economic growth and development. The project, which first began in 2018, intended to add 286 kilometers of track in the hopes that it will improve links between Shanghai's two airports and its two main railway stations. But carrying this out has been estimated to cost a cool $44.2 billion, and the expansion won't likely be finished until 2023. China has been increasing the number of new subway projects and upgrading the old lines, which greatly boosts our domestic sales, said Chen Fei, manager at Kunshan Alex Railway Fastening, that makes track fasteners for subway projects in Suzhou. Shanghai, and Shenzhen. Previously most of our products were exported to the US and Europe, but the infrastructure rebound amid the China-US trade war makes our domestic sales grow. However, once finished, I'm confident that it will make getting around Shanghai easier and faster. Number 8. The Chongqing High-Speed Railway High-speed rail systems are increasingly common in industrialized nations, and the ones being planned in the Chinese towns of Kunming and Chongqing are no exception. Located in southwest China, Chongqing is a city of over 30 million people, and its high-speed railway is a vital part of its transportation network. With speeds reaching up to 350 km per hour, this railway connects Chongqing to other major cities in China, making it easier and faster than ever to travel around the region. But the Chongqing High-Speed Railway isn't just about speed. It's also a marvel of engineering, with state-of-the-art technology and design features that make it a leader in the world of high-speed rail. They are anticipated to cost $20.5 billion. 
The trains will hover on the 700-kilometer long railway because of the incredibly powerful magnets implanted in the tracks. Trains on the route should be able to travel between the two cities in as little as two hours thanks to the assumption that they will be able to travel at speeds of up to 373 kilometers per hour. This is a significant improvement over the four to five hours it currently takes. This high-speed railway connects Hubei as well as Henan, which will surely boost business and trade between Hubei and Chongqing. Shen Quan, the founder of the Chongqing Yuanang Group and a native of Xiangyang, Hubei, said, I've been anticipating the opening of the Zhengzhou Chongqing high-speed train. He frequently travels between the two locations as he has a branch in Hubei. High-speed rails launch will result in lower communication, transaction, and management expenses for the group. He declared that he will take advantage of the chance to grow the company by integrating the industrial chain resources of Hubei, Chongqing, and Henan. It will be a highly used line once it's completed in 2025. Number 7. The Alvesia Zhang Green Juice Bridge The Green Juice Bridge, the world's first Sing Tower single-span suspension bridge. By connecting the Yunnan city of Yuxi and Chukchingi Autonomous Prefecture, the distance traveled will be cut in half. A crucial portion of the 9,000-kilometer Yunnan Highway Network and the 190-kilometer Yuchu Expressway may be found at the Green Juice Bridge. Yunnan is connected to several significant national expressways by the Yuchu Expressway, including the Hangzhou Ruli Expressway and the Guangzhou Kunming Expressway. Aside from these bridges' enormous expanse, the speedy construction is amazing. The construction of the Green Juice Bridge began in 2019, and it was finished in under three years. The Green Bridge is only 798 meters long, so it doesn't set any records, but its engineering prowess is what makes it famous. The bridge, which receives its name from Elvi Zhejiang, hovers over that city. Literally, Elvi Zhejiang means Green Juice River. The bridge emerges from tunnels that jut out of cliff walls on either side of the valley's V-shaped valley. As the first single tower, single span suspension bridge in history, the Green Juice Bridge is supported by just one tower. Cables are used to secure the ends. This indicates that there aren't any more columns. This gives the bridge the appearance of defying gravity, which may make you question what the engineer's intentions were when they created it. This incredible bridge also holds the title for having the steepest tunnel anchorage in the world, which is tilted at 54 degrees. The fact that the primary supporting features, including the 156-meter-tall high tower, the bridge approach on one side, and the tunnel anchorage on the other end, had to be built directly into extremely steep slopes complicated the design and construction. The bridge deck and the assembly really differ in height by 320 meters, which is the same as a structure with 100 stories. The Green Juice Bridge stands out even among the intricate Chinese bridges. Number 6. The Chinese South North Water Transfer Project as you may know, China is a vast and diverse country, with significant differences in climate and water availability from region to region. In the south of the country, there is an abundance of water, while in the north, water is often scarce and subject to drought. To address this imbalance and ensure that all parts of the country have access to sufficient water resources, the Chinese government has undertaken a massive project to transfer water from the south to the north, dubbed the South North Water Transfer Project. This project involves the construction of canals, pipelines, and other infrastructure to move water from the Yangtze River and other sources in the south to the dry regions of the north. But the South North Water Transfer Project is not without its challenges. It has faced criticism for its environmental impact, its cost, and its potential to disrupt local communities. Overall, the Chinese South North Water Transfer Project is one of the most ambitious and complex water projects in the world. Due to its enormous size, China faces a variety of geographic challenges, but their inconsistent fresh water supply is one of the most significant. After all, only around 20% of China's water resources are found in the north, despite the fact that it is home to about 50% of the country's people and a sizable amount of its industry. China consequently started a three-pronged water canal project in an effort to carry water from the south to the north of the country, comprising the eastern route that goes through Shanghai, the western path that travels to northwest China and the center route that connects to Beijing. Once finished in 2050, it will, it is hoped, deliver 44.8 billion cubic meters of water a year to the urban areas in the arid northern region. However, given that it has already cost more than $79 billion when it was only supposed to cost $62 billion, the Chinese government may decide to abandon the project sooner rather than later if it can't resolve its internal management issues. Number 5. China's Famous Yangbaoshan Bridge the next jaw-dropping mega-project in the Asian powerhouse nation is the Yangbaoshan Bridge, which is the longest bridge in the world taller than 300 meters, and having six lanes. The deck is significantly higher, rising 360 meters above the river's real level and 320 meters above a reservoir. 
The six lanes of this bridge make it the widest steel truss suspension bridge ever constructed in China. The lower leg of the West Tower, which stands 186.5 meters tall, is a singular suspension bridge on stilts, measuring 110.7 meters below the deck. In fact, there are just six other suspension bridges with tower piers that are 100 meters or higher below deck in the entire globe. Also, the majority of them are in China. There are several of them, including the Tiger Leaping Railway, Sungsi, Qingshui, Hong Bridge Jianyuan, Da, and Mailing Finglin. The 1,112-meter-long Yangbaoshan Grand Bridge is a section of the Gyeong Huangping Highway. It is crucial to the region's economic growth since it cuts the distance between Gyeong and Huangping from 5 hours to just 1.2 hours by over the Dumu River. In regions like Kainan Prefecture and Kyandongnan Prefecture, it will also assist ethnic minorities. The Southeast Gizhou Prefecture's Huangping County serves as the project's final destination after traveling via the Nanming District of Gyeong City, Wuding District, Longli County, Gaidin County, and Fuquan City. The Yukai Expressway is connected to the endpoint. The bridge's primary span is 650 meters long. The two major cables, which serve as the bridge's vital lifelines, were built utilizing an innovative technique that was tested at this location for the first time in all of China. Each of these cables has 36 through-length strands and weighs roughly 4,600 tons. High-strength galvanized steel wires are employed. The length of the final wire, if all the individual steel cables' wires were taken apart and joined at the ends, would exceed 26,000 kilometers. The circumference of the Earth is more than twice as large as this. The heavy objects didn't need to be transported because the wires could be built there and then. Prior to its opening, engineers stress-tested the Yangbaoshan Bridge by parking 48 heavy-loaded vehicles totaling 1,680 tons. Number 4. China's Ghost Cities Many news reports in the latter part of the 2010s described China's ghost cities. These cities, which were effectively CCP-sponsored and built entirely from scratch, were peculiar because while having cost billions of dollars to construct, they were nearly all deserted. Several of them, like Ordos, have subsequently been populated by millions of people, but others, like Tiandu Chang and Thames Town, have not. Due to widespread speculative real estate investing, which is largely the result of the fact that more traditional investment strategies, such as investments in stocks, ETFs, or mutual funds is a risky gamble in China due to the extreme volatility of the country's stock market. A large portion of these buildings are owned by small-time investors who have no intention of moving into their units and since there are so few apartments, 20% of China's apartments are vacant. Therefore, these places will probably remain undeveloped as ghost cities for the foreseeable future unless the Chinese government helps support the establishment of manufacturing, services, or other industries there. Number 3. The South China Sea Islands While negotiations, threats, promises and wars are the favorite tactics of diplomats, China has made the unique choice of building its own islands to solve its problems. In the South China Sea you can see China is desperately trying to get control of all of the fish oil and shipping lanes that are found within this water body. However Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia and the Philippines all have the right to parts of this waterway via international law. So in order to circumvent this, China has begun to build militarized islands across the South China Sea. The idea here is that, if China can build and occupy these islands they'll become the official Chinese territory. This would not only make their surrounding waters Chinese, but if militarized, would also allow the Chinese to attack foreign ships that entered the waterway. Coined as the Great Wall of Sand by American Admiral Harry Harris, Chinese buildup in the area consists of the creation of new forts on existing islands and the creation of new islands by dredging up sand and piling it into massive clumps. These islands are then filled with jet fighters, battleships and other military vehicles, allowing the Chinese to harass neighboring countries into submission. However, only time will tell whether or not these artificial islands will succeed in accomplishing China's goals in the region. Number 2. Guangzhou Evergrande Football Stadium The Guangzhou Evergrande Football Stadium was built as a result of the Chinese government's efforts to popularize soccer, despite the fact that China may not be known for its soccer culture, designed to host one of the most successful soccer clubs in China. With 100,000 seats and 1.6 million square feet of space, it is rumored to be the largest soccer-only stadium in the world. Construction is expected to cost 1.8 billion. The stadium is a really amazing mega-project because to its large lotus flower-shaped roof and lovely aesthetics. Although the stadium was scheduled to be completed in 2022, many people doubt that it will actually be constructed at all. This is because Evergrande, the developer responsible for the stadium, 
has recently encountered significant financial difficulties, making it nearly impossible for them to commit to finishing most of their projects. Evergrande owes $305 billion in liabilities. There are now credible speculations that the stadium will soon be put up for auction to the highest bidder, and that if no one places a bid, the state-owned Guangzhou City Construction Investment Group will most likely purchase it for the CCP. Let's simply hope that the stadium gets completed someday, whether with private or governmental finances, so that exciting soccer matches can be played in this breathtaking setting. Number 1. The Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge The Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, or HCMB, is the longest sea-crossing bridge and tunnel system in the world. It is a huge 55 kilometers long bridge that connects Zhuhai, Macau, and Hong Kong. Tourists and visitors going to or from Hong Kong had to board a ferry before it was created. Hong Kong, Macau, and nine other Chinese cities will be included in the Greater Bay Area that China intends to build with the giant bridge. The population of the zone is close to 70 million. The HCMB has reduced the travel time between Zhuhai and Hong Kong from four hours to just 30 minutes. The HCMB, which began accepting traffic in 2018, sucked in a staggering $20 billion. But according to Chinese officials, it may bring in up to $1.44 trillion for the economy, which would be a fantastic return on investment. According to officials, the project was delayed by two years and at least 18 construction employees lost their lives. After nine years of construction, Chinese President Xi Jinping declared it to be finished. The construction team employed over 400,000 tons of steel, enough to make 60 Eiffel Towers, to withstand earthquakes and typhoons. The Pearl River Delta Sea is crossed by about 30 kilometers of the bridge's overall length. A 6.7 kilometers piece in the middle, which connects two man-made islands, vanishes into an underwater tunnel to provide room for ships. The remaining portions connect Zhuhai and Hong Kong to the main bridge through link highways, viaducts, and land tunnels. To keep the bridge in top condition, the government anticipates spending close to $30 million annually on upkeep. Even though the HCMB is fascinating, not everyone can drive on it. You require a specific permit to utilize the bridge, which administrators provide according to a quota system. Even after receiving the priceless permit, there is still a toll to be paid. Only private shuttle buses will operate the route since the bridge has not been certified for public transportation. A train link was also not included by the planners. And if you ever have the chance to drive over the bridge, be careful because yawn cams are set up to catch drivers yawning. In fact, the police will be notified right away if you yawn three times, so before trying to cross, be sure you're rested. However, there are surveillance cameras and specialized police patrols for spotting terrorist threats. Additionally, there are designated merging channels that allow drivers to switch lanes because drivers in China and Hong Kong operate their vehicles on the opposing sides of the road. 9,200 vehicles per day were previously anticipated by the authorities to traverse the bridge. However, when new transportation networks were being created in the area, they had to lower their prediction. Let's hear what you think about these mega projects in China in the comments section below.